I'd like to thank all of you for joining. Again, my name is Kevin Mahal. I'm a Technical Customer Success Manager here at TechSoup. Uh, in today's session, uh, it is not reducing risk um, by managing identity threats. Um, we will, in fact, be uh, discussing Cisco and the Cisco programs. Um, with uh, us today, um, as you may have heard, uh, we have a laundry list of um, exciting people joining us um, from TechSoup. Uh, you just heard uh, my director, uh, the Director of Customer Success, Gerard Morris, um, the, our Director of Customer Development Community Outreach, Felipe Reyes, is joining us. Our Director of Hardware Programs, Shasta Keating, is as well. From our Cisco team, um, presenting will be Yvonne Hargrove, who manages our Cisco Meraki donation products. Uh, and we have a couple of very, very special guests from Cisco, uh, from the Cisco Strategy and Solutions Crisis Response Team, Eric Knudsen. And again, joining us all the way from the beautiful country of Belgium is Patrick Ferre, a program manager with the Cisco product grant program. So just a couple of quick housekeeping rules. Uh, as um, probably already uh, mentioned, uh, the chat function is where we're going to be putting in questions and answers that you have today. Um, for those that are in need of closed captions, uh, there are two ways to access this. Um, in the upper right corner, if you're using the Teams desktop version from the drop down menu, if you scroll all the way down, you will see a tab that reads closed captions, which is what's in the slide here. If you are on the browser version, you will need to scroll your cursor down towards the center middle of the screen. You will see a uh, element pop up similar to uh, what we just showed. There will be three dots. You click on that and then you will find uh, the closed caption uh, button. So quickly, today's agenda, um, we've already kind of gone over some of the introductions here of the teams that are joining us from Cisco um, and from TechSoup, as well as the Cisco team. Uh, we will also then be doing a brief introduction uh, to the Cisco Meraki donation and the Cisco Meraki discount programs. After concluding that portion, we will then be moving to the Q&A before sharing some additional resources and wrapping up today's session. So with that very, very quick and brief introduction, uh, I'm going to move this over to Yvonne Hargrove, uh, Program Manager from our Cisco Meraki Donation Program. Take it away, Yvonne. I'm not sure if my camera is on, but um, hopefully everyone can hear me OK. We can hear you and see you. Great. So. Okay, great. Thank you. So hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for this Cisco virtual office hour. I'm the program manager for the Cisco and Cisco Meraki programs through TechSoup, and I'm here to tell you all about these wonderful offers. Cisco has been a valued partner since 2002 with TechSoup, and their flagship program is the donation program. And through this program, nonprofits can access up to $30,000 in retail value of product per fiscal year for the low admin administrative fee price of $4,800. So that's a 16% admin fee for this wonderful donated product. Um, in addition, Cisco offers a discount program, which is Meraki products offered at a 45% discount. So there is some difference between these programs that it's important to be aware of. Um, the first one is you can't participate in one and then participate in the other. There's a six month period in between um, a buffer there. So the other aspect of the programs that is different is the eligibility. So the donation program is available to organizations who provide direct services to low income individuals in the target areas of basic human needs like food, shelter, clothing, job training, employment, um, things like that. The donation, excuse me, the discount program is available to almost everyone else. Um, there are a few ex exceptions, libraries, public schools, government, um, entities, but the discount program is the availability and the eligibility is very wide open. So 
please do check that out um, if you're not eligible for the donation program. And I just wanted to mention about the donation program that recently it was open to environmental organizations. So please, if you fall into that category, um, give us, you know, look us up or drop us a chat or a message. Um, I also wanted to mention that Cisco offers an employee product donation program since we do have so many wonderful Cisco employees on the call today. And that program offers a 75% discount on the retail value of Cisco products for you as an employee to then donate to your favorite nonprofit or the nonprofit that you wish to support. Um, if you're interested in that, you can see the email addresses available there on the screen, ciscoepdp at techsoup.org. Finally, I wanted to mention another offer that Cisco has through TechSoup, which is WebEx at a 60% discount um, for nonprofits. And you can see the URL there at the bottom. It's techsoup.org forward slash WebEx dash meetings. So Kevin, if we can please go to the next slide. Thank you. So here you can see some of the integral products that Cisco offers to help support your network, security cameras, switches, access points, security appliances, and coming soon, Cisco, Umbrella, Duo, and Secure Endpoint, formerly known as AMP. If you are interested in the security as a software products, please email us at cisco at techsoup.org or keep an eye out on the catalog for those products to be available there in the future. And again, on the lower left hand corner, corner, you will see a little bit more of a description of the difference between the donation program and the discount program. Um, for the discount program, you are allowed to spend up to $110,000 per fiscal year for $200,000 worth of products. So that's also a really good offer. You can see the Educational institutions, government organizations, and non 501 c 3 libraries are listed there. And just another note that all of the donated products include a five-year license and technical support. So with that, um, I also wanted to mention one other, just kind of to highlight the Umbrella Duo and Secure Endpoint and that email there, cisco at techsoup.org. We can also process off catalog requests for you for traditional Cisco products that aren't currently in the catalog, Meraki products that aren't cur currently in the catalog, and right now the Umbrella Duo and Secure Endpoint. So with that, I will pass it back to Kevin, and I think we're going to move into the Q&A. Hey, Yvonne, thank you so much. Uh, this is just an awesome program. Uh, before doing that, though, um, in jumping right into Q&A, because I did see that there were some uh, questions that were coming through. I did want to take another second to introduce uh, Shasta Keating, um, our Director of Hardware Programs. And then again, as we mentioned, we have some very special guests here that I would be remiss if we didn't take the opportunity to thank them for joining us today as well. Shasta? Might be muted. Sorry, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. OK, wonderful. So it's my pleasure to introduce Patrick Verre. He is the lead for Cisco's product grant program. He started as a lab engineer at Cisco Belgium, one of my favorite locations in Europe because they offer Leonidas chocolate and we talk about that almost in every call. One of the first field support engineers um, in EMEA and specialized, and Patrick specialized later in land switching. Patrick managed and delivered the Kepner Trago program to Cisco TAC and started the Cisco donations program outside the US. Uh, an incredible resource for us, an incredible partner. Thank you, Patrick, so much for joining us. He is now managing worldwide charitable product donations uh, program of Cisco. And Patrick lives near Brussels Airport in a tiny village of Perk. It makes me want to visit Europe every time I speak with him. I'd also like to introduce Eric Knudsen. 
Um, Eric is the technology strategy and solutions lead for Cisco Crisis Response, where he's working to enable the team in delivering solutions and services to those most in need. Eric speaks, de speaks, delivers training, and designs secure Cisco internet communications platforms to provide communications capabilities to organizations of all sizes and dispositions. Eric enjoys scuba diving like me and my husband and running races in his spare time, just like my husband, as well as refining his award-winning chili recipe with uh, a Korean flair. He and his wife, Alyssa, live and enjoy the humidity of Houston with their beloved chihuahuas, Bugsy and Santo, and Husky and Eli. It's really such a pleasure to have you two here, and I extend a warm, warm welcome to Mehul Patel and any others from Cisco that have taken time out from their busy schedules. This is intended to be a conversation with the experts of the TechSoup program and our Cisco experts. So please uh, feel free to, to be relaxed, ask questions, ask for follow-up with us. Um, and we're so delighted that you're all here. Welcome. Yeah, I want to second and third that it's great to have all three of you here uh, with us for VOH. I actually think it's the first vendor partner where we've had representation at, which is uh, like kind of like winning the lottery, sort of um, only better because it provides Internet. So um, so with that, we're going to go ahead and then move to questions and answers. So let me jump here into the chat here, uh, Victoria. Does that include the Boys and Girls Club where we serve low income families and provide child care? So that is uh, an absolutely awesome question. Um, Victoria, um, our part of our um, major markets team. Yep. So Yvonne just checked in. Yep. OK, I was uh, literally just going to ask that. Um, beat me to it. So if you can go ahead and provide your contact information, uh, we definitely can help you uh, further with that. I'm going to put another heart on there as well. So. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually did have uh, one question I wanted to put to you, Yvonne, perhaps, um, and then the Cisco folks that are here, maybe you could possibly, actually, I have kind of two, if I have time for a second one, um, is the question of interoperability, right? So you have Cisco, you have Meraki, these are two separate programs, they perform two separate things. Cisco has switches and ports. Meraki has switches and ports. Can I make just make these all work together, like just one simple flawless thing, or is that something I need to consider when I'm planning uh, my networking environment? Hey, Kevin, this is Eric. Uh, I'll take that question, um, and uh, maybe Mahul, if you want to pop in and uh, and address some things, if you want to make some comments. But um, but it's that's an interesting question because uh, it's one that even that people in a consulting role at Cisco ask themselves and have uh, for many years. Um, but I would say that from a technical perspective, um, most of the devices that we make, uh, they all interoperate with each other, especially when you think about things like Ethernet uh, or uh, IP um, and TCP and things of that nature. Um, those are all internet standards that have existed for many decades, and uh, and whether you use uh, a device that that says Cisco Meraki on it, uh, or another device that says Cisco Catalyst on it, they're all pretty much guaranteed to work together. Um, so you know, if there are some more pointed uh, or technical uh, questions regarding interoperability, uh, we certainly please feel free to ask. Uh, Mahul, is there anything you'd like to add there? I think uh, I'll second everything that you said. Uh, in addition to that, I would say uh, Cisco Meraki and um, you know Cisco uh, traditional gear that you can manage via DNA, CLI. Um, when you're thinking about which route to go, um, one thing that you would want to ask yourself is how do you want to manage these devices, right? Uh, I am a solutions engineer at Cisco Meraki, so um, basically, if you want to go with Meraki products, um, you can manage all these products from a single pane of glass. We have a 
very beautiful dashboard that you can easily manage your devices with. Um, and it, it takes only one or two or you know a small IT team to even manage multiple locations that you have. So it's ease of use that you basically think of when you think of Cisco Meraki. Not that other Cisco gear is not <laughs> easy to use, uh, but it might take some technical training, right? To get used to CLI or how to properly configure and manage these devices. So if you don't have that technical depth or if you don't have that much um, in terms of resources for your IT management, Cisco Meraki is the way to go. That's here, awesome. here. And I, I, I yeah, second that. And, yeah, and I'll third that and then raise you. Um, I have attended probably a dozen partner events, um, but I, they're ones that are also available to the general public for support on how to deploy. And you all do an amazing job at demos. They're probably some of my favorite to attend. So I just wanted to get that out there on recorded video that. Um, what your team does to support the products, I think is fantastic. So I had a question in here from uh, Patrick Helm, and um, Yvonne maybe perhaps uh, could take this as uh, clarify the Meraki donation versus discount program eligibility. We are a re nonprofit religious organization. Sure, I'll take that question. And Patrick, to clarify, the discount program is for is for you. That's the program that you would want to avail yourself of because it is um, open to religious organizations. So 45% discount. It's pretty good, pretty good deal. So um, we I hope you check it out. And if you have any additional questions, you can email us at cisco at techsoup.org or cisco Meraki at techsoup.org, and we'll be happy to help you out. Thank you. Yeah, Eric just pinged into uh, the chat um, a link to the learning resources uh, for Meraki. Again, I'm just going to keep riding this horse into the sunset. They're awesome. If you are managing this on your own, like small church, small office, um, just know you're not alone. There's a lot of resources in there to guide you from point A to point B. Let's see what we got here. Kevin, I did also drop in skills for all link. Um, I was just on a, a live webinar on uh, uh, women in IT, for example, uh, that um, our um, uh, network academy just put on. If you guys have some other training portals to recommend, please feel free to put them in. But I thought these were some great ones that just came up today. Yeah, I, I have a, a pretty large list uh, of uh, information for, from you all uh, in our SharePoint. So uh, perhaps I can add a couple of things <laughs> to our deck before it gets pushed out as well. Um, I have, I, I, I apologize if I don't pronounce the first name correctly, Hosuawo um, Tarnagda um, says here that uh, we are a nonprofit organization that works with refugees and immigrants. Many of our clients like to study computer skills and many of them do not understand English. Our refugee youth program love to study coding. Would you be able to help to support refugees and immigrants? Um, if you could toss um, your uh, email uh, into the chat, uh, certainly see how um, we can fit in uh, what we have available to you to help support your organization in general, uh, particularly around Cisco. Be happy to have a larger conversation uh, as well. And with that, I'm actually also going to drop my email in the chat. You can feel free to reach out to me directly um, for anything technical. Um, it's kind of in my job title, so uh, if I can't answer it, um, there's again, we've got great resources here to get these answers. There are some questions on the Q&A side here. OK, Let's see here. All right. Um, I did actually want to throw in um, another question here because we're about at the, the halfway mark. Um, and maybe some of the Cisco folks can speak to this. So it looks like you've completely redesigned, and this might not be super recently, but recently enough, completely redesigned Cisco WebEx. Um, going through to Cisco WebEx to connect to the events I've attended, I'm, I'm totally blown away by the user interface. And there's 
even some of the things I've seen about potential call capabilities and things like that, um, a lot of the questions that we get are like around security and compliance. And it seems that WebEx is kind of like the gold standard, governments, these types of things. I was wondering if, if any of you could speak to the um, to some of the capabilities just briefly about WebEx and maybe explain how it, it could be a solution that um, some of our nonprofit customers could help uh, leverage. Uh, Kevin, this is Eric again. I'll kind of talk about it a little bit. Uh, I used to consult on WebEx and collaborate technologies um, many years ago, back when I had hair. I'm glad my video is not on. Um, and uh, it wasn't as good as you, though. Your hair is pretty good. I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, anyhow, um, but just for anyone that didn't know, uh, WebEx has been around for about 20 years. Uh, funny enough, I think this was a year or two ago. I happened to see a tweet from Paul, if you're familiar with RuPaul and, uh, and the show, uh, the, the Drag Race show. I can't remember what channel it's on. But anyhow, uh, RuPaul did a um, year 2000 Super Bowl ad for WebEx uh, well before Cisco had actually purchased them. So that's <laughs> that's how I knew that it was uh, uh, almost as old as, as I was. Um, but it was uh, kind of the original Zoom. It was the original Teams, um, and uh, and maybe they didn't do great from a marketing perspective, but it was one of those great uh, online meeting tools that you could use, um, you know, to have calls and video meetings with uh, with people around the world. Um, nowadays, it's been enhanced uh, with the ability to um, tie your phones to it. Uh, whether they're analog phones or they're IP-based phones or internet-based phones, um, and uh, and even build out your own call center environments inside of it. Um, but a lot of those capabilities exist, um, whether we're talking about Zoom or Microsoft, um, even like Google and some others are, are building them themselves. So it kind of depends on you know some certain features you're looking for uh, as to what I would recommend uh, to be your best choice, but but I certainly have a bias towards WebEx and and I think it's like the Swiss Army knife of online meetings. It can do basically anything. Um, and uh, recently, we just announced a, a new partnership with Microsoft uh, for the devices that we build, whether they're room systems uh, or desktop-based video conferencing systems. Uh, that will interoperate with uh, Microsoft Teams meetings as well. So whether you're looking for an online software uh, meeting capability using your laptops or your smartphones uh, or high quality devices uh, that you can use to dial into a meeting, whether it's a WebEx meeting or a Zoom meeting or a Microsoft Teams meeting, um, have a look at the, at the WebEx devices and platform. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm definitely going to second that. There's a lot of um, organization. I'm really excited to hear that you're moving um, more so into the um, device space, the, having the, the control of the, the hardware, the software, the firmware, uh, integrating. It's exciting. This is where obviously through Teams and this conversation. Um, this is something I get a lot of outreach around, and it's um, hopefully uh, you know, as people see the advantage of adopting um, solutions, uh, hopefully Cisco is at the top of their list here. Um, I have a question here from Larry Wagner. Uh, hello, uh, we're already Meraki users and have been for several years. Can someone give an overview of Umbrella and how it works with Meraki products? I don't know if anyone wants to take a yeah, the whole brief step. Hey, Eric, that. you want to take it? Or you want to take it? Okay, I'll I'll take I'll take uh, a, a bit of it. I'll I'll talk about the platform generally, and maybe you can talk about the direct integration in with Meraki. About that? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, great. Uh, so, uh, excuse me. So, Webex is uh, is uh, an online service that that we have, and um, and it does a variety of things. Uh, at at its base level, it does what we call DNS security, right? So, if you're familiar with the domain name system. Uh, that we use uh, on the internet to make a friendly name like TechSoup.org into the IP addresses of the TechSoup web server or other email services, for example. Um, that's that's the DNS system, and DNS is uh, really interesting because you use it for just about every type of computer-based, you know, digital communication online, um, right? Whether we're browsing to the 
uh, Yahoo email service or we're going to the Google email, you know, Gmail web interface, uh, or those are passing messages between each other. Everyone is using DNS many, many times a day, um, uh, tens of thousands of times a day for an organization, millions of times a month. And so Umbrella is our online DNS service that you can use as um, what we call a resolver, right? So it, is, it stands in between the IP addresses and the names that you're looking for or the names that you're asking for to get the IP addresses and what's great about that is that you can use it to apply your own security services or excuse me, your security policies to. So that way you can block questionable content at the name level. And we attribute certain reputation scores to those names. Um, and, uh, and DNS, again, is ubiquitous for online communication, whether you're talking about you know, human-based communication, like, hey, I'm trying to browse to a website uh, or even machine-based communication, you know, you have your own um, software or service that are VMs, virtual machines, whether they're, you know, on your own premise, on your own network inside your organization or in the public cloud somewhere, they're all using DNS, right? And so if you point them to the Cisco umbrella service, you can, again, have a very, very powerful security tool. Uh, and it's very useful for not only securing your devices, but also just preventing uh, access to um, malware uh, and uh, and other nefarious, you know, cyber crime types of service online. Uh, so we actually run a bunch of statistics and and uh, and track uh, the frequency of um, domain name resolutions uh, so that we can identify and help fight cyber crime online. And that partnership with Microsoft, it's in partnership with uh, the various governments, you know, uh, of various nation states across the world. But that's like the most basic, uh, I think, explanation of Umbrella. Mahul, do you want to talk about how it works with Umbrella? Or excuse me, with Meraki infrastructure? Yeah, I think uh, you give a very good description. Uh, I think very simple to digest and understand. So thank you. Um, but yeah, I think at the basic level, if you think about what Umbrella brings to the table, it's DNS security. Um, and you can easily integrate that with your Meraki wireless or if you have Meraki uh, SD-WAN or firewall product. Um, you can also uh, take advantage of other security aspects of Umbrella. Um, for example, SSL decryption um, and protecting your data in many other ways. So if you have, let's say, um, Umbrella account already, and if you're using other Umbrella services or security services already, you can also integrate that with Meraki. Um, we also um, recently, um, it's been it's been a while. Uh, we launched um, connectors when you can actually, um, within a few clicks, you can actually have your Meraki uh, MXs connect to Umbrella data centers. So basically, it creates a complete VPN tunnel. So all of your data, uh, not only DNS, but all of your data, internet bound data, is filtered. Um, based on your security policies in the Umbrella, right? So you're taking complete advantage of all the security features that Umbrella offers, um, and you're still using your Meraki infrastructure to do it, right? So um, it basically adds multiple layers of security, if you think about it, uh, to your infrastructure, uh, if you want to go that route. Um, but yeah, there are multiple ways to integrate uh, Meraki and Umbrella. One is the simplest way is you add a DNS level protection um, when you just uh, divert anything that is DNS related to Umbrella and check uh, against your policies if a website that you're browsing to is safe or not and things like that. Um, other ways to create a full VPN tunnel when you send all internet traffic to Umbrella and have them filtered based on the different security policies um, you set up uh, there in the Umbrella portal. Um, we recently have also launched um, SASE product, right? Which is again, goes a uh, few steps even ahead of that and gives you like six clicks uh, integration with Umbrella and other um, you know, Cisco products to get you started on your SASE journey, right? SASE is again, uh, if I were to narrow it down and Eric uh, decide if you want to add to that is, basically combining your SD-WAN and connectivity needs with your um, cloud security needs, right? 
So it's connectivity with security, but basically you're doing it from the cloud. Um, so a lot of options if you want to secure your networks with uh, Umbrella and Meraki. Let us know if you want to know more details and I can also share some documentation on the chat. And that was a really great overview of it. I've been to uh, Umbrella presentations. Um, was not familiar with software defined wireless area network, SD WAN, got to learn all the terminology, not having a networking background. Uh, the resources again were fantastic. Um, so I have a question here. This is actually, a, I think, a, another really good one. Um, are your internet appliances this is from Tom Shipman compatible with other vendors? Example, security appliance or switch um, compatible with non Cisco products like Ubiquity, access points, Netgear switches. Um, I would maybe even throw Sonic Wall in there. Um, um, not asking for it to manage the non Cisco hardware, but can they work in the same sandbox? Yeah, I can definitely talk to that. Um, so uh, indeed, they are they are compatible. Um, just like I was mentioning, the the internet standards. You know, where would we be without standards, right? Absolutely, can work with Sonic Wall, Checkpoint, Ubiquity Gear, um, and and yeah, right. The 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 management side of things would be the big question. Uh, but even my team uses a, a variety of vendors and. Uh, I'll tell you on our social media, if you ever look at Instagram uh, or Facebook for the Cisco crisis response um, uh, uh, team page, whatever it is, um, when we post pictures about the, the, the different responses that we do and we've got a ubiquity access point or a bridge in, in the picture, people give us grief um, because, you know, hey, sometimes that's what it takes, you know, to, to get a mission right interoperate with some existing equipment. So not a problem. Thank you so much, Eric, for that. Um, got a uh, question here from David Downs. Uh, this it looks like it's kind of to us here. Um, what's the best way to get help deciding what hardware and connections to buy and set up for uh, product and webcast church services? We have a simple single camera and audio system and we'll want to move to a multiple camera setup. Um, I think, again, that's something that um, we can definitely field uh, that direct uh, support need, David. I'm, I'm going to toss my email in the chat again. Be happy to kind of go through um, on a full uh, level, a fuller level, uh, your uh, current hardware networking uh, and then software uh, situation and time that best uh, works for you. Kevin, and, can I make a quick comment on that? Yeah, I was actually going to put it back to you. Um, please go ahead, Eric. OK, great. Uh, I just posted a link to um, a microsite that we've got called Project Workplace. Um, and uh, we have a, a pen tilt zoom camera that you can mount to a wall uh, for use with WebEx or other meeting services. Now, I will say that it's probably more optimized to uh, taking like a, uh, like a online meeting experience and uh, and giving people the the ability to 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 use a camera in like an auditorium or like a very very conference room but i will say that webex uh, even the microsoft teams and, and others we have the ability within those platforms to stream um, meetings into youtube i think facebook live and others um, so if you want some more information on that and that might be exactly what you're looking for um, but a lot of those software platforms, uh, again, whether it's WebEx or others, you can stream to like a public streaming site that might be more appropriate for, for people to join, you know, YouTube and stuff. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I actually was not familiar with uh, the external uh, video recording hardware, so I'm going to actually take a look after we wrap up uh, to learn more about it. OK, let's see you got here. Um, from Mariella Davia. Uh, hello from the explanation. Cisco Meraki seems to be easier to install, configure and use than Cisco traditional devices. Is this correct? If yes, what kind of expertise do I need to manage Cisco Meraki devices? That's a really good question, which I will turn over to you, Eric, and or your, the Cisco team. Mahul, this is all you. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, that's a great question. I think uh, so if you don't have um, a lot of IT background and you want to install uh, network infrastructure or gear, um, Cisco Meraki would be the route to go. Uh, the example that I often give to my customers is my sales team here at Cisco Meraki. A lot of them, when they're onboarded, they're new to even technology. Some of them don't have technology backgrounds. Um, I help them to change their networking gear in their house to Meraki. And from my experience, it takes uh, zero to very minimal uh, knowledge to install Meraki devices. Um, it would be something similar if I were to compare is if you have installed smart devices in your houses. Uh, it's very simple. You follow the instructions and everything just gets started and connected and serves you well, right? So that's the kind of experience you'll get with Cisco Meraki. So even if you're not uh, from a technical background, if you want to get started and you know set up a network infrastructure, Meraki is going to be the best route. Also, Meraki offers 24-7 support. We have great documentation. Uh, of course, we have awesome resources uh, here at Cisco Meraki to help you through that process. Um, so yeah, let us know uh, if you need to know more. And I'll just, I will echo that, that every interaction I've had with Meraki support has been wonderful. And when I read the installation paperwork, I think maybe I could even do this. So when I have no technical background. So I think I agree. Yeah, you definitely can. <laughs> and I would I would like to add just just because uh, the, the traditional Cisco product, you know, is sort of serves 85% of the world's uh, tech infrastructure. And we've had supply chain issues. But for us within TechSoup, we've been talking to our IT infrastructure team and about this very question in terms of where Cisco traditional product meets our needs and where Cisco Meraki product meets our needs. And I think it's important to note that each have a role in helping us to build our networks, um, get our switches, enhance our security. And that's exactly why we're here. Patrick, for example, will work with us at length um, to understand and help you understand and help the sector understand how traditional Cisco products work and what we can do and we can offer. And Mehul, it's so wonderful to have you be part of our um, office hour because you can certainly do that for Meraki. So my message to you guys uh, as our sector is as we try to improve some of these important aspects of our infrastructure, um, keep an open mind to both and and you know, and contact us and have that conversation so we can customize to your needs. One of the ways that we can do that is through the special uh, product delivery program. You know, we live in a customized world. So one of the things that we're doing in, in, in lots of collaboration with Kevin and Gerard and Yvonne's working on it, Olin from our team is working on it, and you will hear from us more and more. We're trying to automate the process, but even now, you can contact us at cisco at techsoup.org and we can really offer you customized um, service on what products meet your needs best. So please, please do so. Yeah, I'm gonna just five seconds just to re-echo that. The customer success team, the Cisco program team, who I love, 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 love working with. Um, you're not alone. If you have questions, you know, our contacts have been made available. They will be made available afterwards. Uh, just come to us. Um, we're working on some things for that in the back end to help you automate these processes even more. But we still want to be there to hear some of those questions uh, that you might be even be afraid to ask. Um, there's one more question in here because um, we're getting a little close to time. And uh, Eric, you had already jumped in on that, but I did want to get this on recording. Um, Tom again has asked, uh, can WebEx integrate the feeds with multiple MXL AC404 and or MXL AC360s into a single audio feed, including sound processing optimization like Zoom can with Zoom rooms? So Eric, you had gotten to that. Um, and I was, if you had a just a couple uh, seconds to maybe reiterate or expand on that or somebody else from the team, um, that's, 
way out of my uh, level of understanding. Sure, sure, no problem. I uh, I like to uh, to troll the um, commercial AV forums in my spare time, and uh, essentially, in, if we're talking about WebEx on a uh, full OS type of device, laptop or a PC. You know, uh, what I was thinking as I looked at those devices, and I'm not terribly familiar with them, so so forgive me for for maybe not getting some of the uh, the details right regarding the AC404 or AC360s, is that uh, I don't think WebEx can handle multiple like USB audio devices in the OS and like deconflict them or address them all simultaneously, for example. And um, however, uh, as I read that and, and after I answered, I saw Zoom Room and I was like, oh, I, I thought to myself, I think Zoom Rooms tend to be handled separately as a separate type of device, separate class of device even. Um, and uh, and so I went ahead and dropped uh, a link into uh, again the project workspace site, which is which is great because it shows you our devices in the context of an actual conference room. Uh, and uh, and I feel like these are the original soundbar style devices. Um, I think we've had them out for probably eight to ten years. Uh, and they do interoperate with Zoom and um, and teams and blue jeans and things of that nature. Um, but they each of these devices typically will support multiple microphones, whether they're in the integrated soundbar, they're in an, a microphone array, if you will. Uh, but they also have the capability of adding additional microphones, whether they're the kind of the, the desktop surface. Um, how do I want to say this? The flat um, uh, microphones that you might see on a conference room table. Uh, or ceiling mounted um, condenser mics uh, that actually have like a plexiglass uh, array or a shield that focuses the sound. You can mount that to the ceiling. Uh, so if you're considering a device, a dedicated device, have a look at those uh, those Cisco Room series and Cisco Room kits. And they're they're great and they provide an exceptional audio and video experience. Um, but if those are going into a laptop or a PC, then eh, I don't I don't I don't have high hopes for that. You know, at least one of those devices would work. Oh, I see. Zoom Runes is an additional license. OK, if it runs on a PC, then we're probably going to be limited to what the, the WebEx application itself can handle. And I, th I think that's just a single microphone unless you run like some sort of a virtualization layer um, that uh, that allows you to aggregate all those microphones into like a single virtual microphone style device uh, and then present it to the to the application. Yeah, thank you so much, Eric and Tom. Just awesome questions. Um, or again, we're getting uh, pretty close to the end here. So uh, to being respectful of uh, all of our guest time and of your time uh, and your patience uh, as we work through a little bit of technical issue uh, at the start of this. Um, I just want you to know again, you're not alone. You have the Cisco team, you have the customer success team, you have TechSoup as a whole here for you. Uh, a variety of different resources. Everything outside of Cisco from the digital skills and training, although including um, coursework uh, regarding that, uh, our digital transformation forum. And then we have our monthly office webinars series, which you are joining us uh, with, uh, with this. Um, you can ignore the date that's on that slide. Uh, we, we will be back sooner than September 22nd. Um, we are working on whether we're going to do something for the month of December, just given the, the holiday season. Um, we will be definitely kicking back into full gear in January with some um, exciting uh, events launching in uh, 2023. And some additional resources, you of course can schedule free consultations. There's a digital assessment tool, networking equipment offers. The, this slide will be made available to you, but we are going to make sure that when you come to TechSoup for a product, when you come to TechSoup looking to obtain Cisco, Cisco Meraki, that not only do you get the product at the best price, but that the level of service and support for onboarding it meets that same level of quality. So again, we thank you very much for your patience at the beginning of this, your patience during this, the Cisco team for joining. I cannot tell you how excited I am to have a vendor join us uh, for one of our virtual office hours. I love your products. I love what you do for the community. Uh, Eric, Patrick, Nahul, I thank you so, so much uh, for being with us today. And I thank you all for joining us. 
Um, and with that, um, we are going to uh, sign off here. Thank you all for joining us and have a pleasant weekend. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Bye.